Aye. Let's get started. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman Ridgeville. Aye. Follow up. Mr. McMackens. Here. Ms. Duggan. Here. Mr. Mullins. Here. Ms. Thomas. Chairman Fan. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have four members present, one absent. You do have a quorum, sir. All right. Item number one is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded. Call the roll. Motion made by Mr. McMacken, seconded by Ms. Duggan to approve the agenda of the April 8, 2020 meeting of the Cannon County Board of Education. Mr. McMackens. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Th uh, Ms. Thomas is absent. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, four ayes, no nays. Item number two is the consent agenda. The only item on it is the uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Second. Call the roll. Motion made by Mr. Mullins, seconded by Ms. Duggan to approve the consent agenda. A, approve the minutes of the March 11, 2021 meeting of the board, and B, no bus trips. Mr. McMackins. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Chairman, four ayes, no days. Item number three, the safety report is given at the workshop only. Due to safety concerns, item number four is the approval to apply for the Perkins Reserve Grant. Do I have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? Second. Second's been made. Call the roll, Mr. Kirsch. Motion made by Mr. McMack and seconded by Mr. Mullins to approve the to for application of the Perkins Reserve Grant. Mr. McMackens. Aye. Ms. Duggan? Aye. Mr. Mullins? Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, four ayes, no nays. Item number five is to review the interscholastic athletics policy. Uh, Mr. Mackins has done a whole lot of work on that. Y'all have any discussion? I was going to make a motion that we table it to again next month. And that's you just I just I'm just making a motion we do to just table the whole thing and then that way we just have a Another chance to look over from top to bottom and then not just piecemeal it tonight. And just put the whole thing off the next month and then we'll vote on it next month. Hopefully, we have it ready. All right. Do I have a motion to table? I'll make a motion. I think you just did. I'm yeah. just All right. Motion been made and seconded. Call roll. Motion made by Mr. McMack and seconded by Mr. Mullins to table the revision of the Cannon County Board of Education Policy 4.301. Interscholastic Athletics to May 13, 2021, meeting of the Kennedy County Board of Education. So allow pop proper handbooks to be developed for Kennedy County High School, Kennedy County Middle Grades, and Kennedy County Elementary Schools. Mr. Mackens. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, four ayes, no nays. This will be tabled and first item on the agenda on the May 13th uh, meeting of the board. Fourth item, first mother item of business. All right, item number six. I uh, discussed virtual learning for 2021 2022 school year. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, if I can, uh, we talked about this in the workshop. Um, I think any mandate that the students of Kennedy Schools will attend in person on uh, all campuses with the exception of those students that are homebound due to uh, doctor recommendations or, or, or medical condition, I think is the way to do this motion. And that's what I would recommend as uh, the director of schools. That sounds great, but things change. Uh, and things can change. And we know that due to COVID, you're just making a statement that unless things, anything major occurs, uh, any, if the COVID numbers go up or whatever, then you, you still have that option to certainly go to uh, remote learning, distance learning as needed. But the principals are in favor of this. Uh, teachers are in favor of this. People, we need, we need our kids on our campuses. Okay. Anybody want to put that in the form of a motion? Should we include anything about the AB in there as alternative? Is that, is that proper for that particular line or is that something total or 
Okay. So we're, we're saying we're not going to do verse, well, then should we say then, if need be, A, B, and then if need be, totally go back to verse. I think that's a good point. I, I think that would be a very valid point to say, you know, that you say that, that we can say that. You cannot last. Uh, with exception, and I would, I would read that uh, to suggest to, to, with the exception of a pandemic, a pandemic, Conditions, and I'm just writing, so you tell me what to change. With exception of pandemic conditions, as determined by the Tennessee Department of Health, and that's what we go by, is their recommendations. And what would happen to CLP, your, your conditional learning plan, would have to that'll have to be worked on anyway because you'll have a, a new CLP for the for next year if that work that occurred. Uh, but by, if determined by Tennessee Department to go A B schedule. What determines to get into A B? The number of cases and contacts within a school. And is there a number? I mean, we got a figure. There 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 is not. We usually go for flu about twelve point five to 15% when those numbers start happening. And then normally in that situation, I will, I will contact the health department and their medical director for the upper Cumberland will then contact me and give me a recommendation. Yeah, it's with 10, you know, somewhere around 10 to 12% is what we've been doing basically the same, but, but those numbers are critical um, when you get that many cases and you do that per school. We decided to do that. We did it for the whole county, but then we turned right around and did it per school. And that worked out a whole lot better per school than for the entire county. Well, I'd never see that, but we did. We shut down one school. We shut down two, actually two schools during this whole process and then shut down the entire county for two at two different times. But that's that determination is we work with hand in hand with the Department of Health to go to a AD schedule, then to uh, total remote. Total distance learning is what we, the terminology that we, what we utilize. So you mean to read the motion, Mr. Chairman, just as we have it, so everybody understands that's what you want. Okay, to mandate that students of Kennedy County Schools will attend in person on all campuses, with the exception of those students that are homebound due to doctor recommendations or medical condition, with the exception of pandemic conditions as determined by the Tennessee Department of Health to go to an A-B schedule, then to total distance learning if needed. Did I, and um, are you appropriate with that motion? Like, or anything I need to change? What you want to do? Do your motion. This motion is. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded. Call her up. Motion made by Mr. McMack and second Ms. Ms. Duggan to mandate the students of Kansas -Can schools will attend in person on all campuses with the exception of those students that are homebound due to doctor recommendation before a medical condition, with the exception of pandemic conditions as determined by the Tennessee Department of Health to go to the AB schedule, then total distance learning if needed. Mr. McMackens. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Aye. Uh, Chairman, four eyes, no nays. Mr. Chairman, can I back up one shot? Because I checked on something y'all wanted me to check on. You want me to give that now on item five? Just to sure, clarify, yeah, it was something brought up uh, the other night about uh, the virtual school. That's correct. And TSSAA does not recognize virtual schools because a school has to join them to, to participate in TSSAA or middle school association games or school, member school. Only member schools can participate. And unless they are member school, then that, that particular individual cannot play a sport. Now, if you're if you're uh, homeschooled, we've already talked about that, they can, if they're registered with our system, and do the 
August proper, one, yeah. what looks like proper documentation and proper dates, then they can play. But uh, the only other only other way that uh, schools that are chart are, are members of TSSAA to play with another school is if they're a member, and then they can co-op if they don't have a they can co-op if they don't have a team. And we've done that for uh, track before with uh, Central Magnet. So, but that's still that's still two member schools working it out on. Uh, Come together for a program, and uh, even a charter school would have to join. Does that mean you disqualify the whole team if that person were to be on the team? Or I would say they they, they would. They would be an ineligible an member. They'd be an eligible participant, yeah, could, and then subject to the yeah, exactly. uh, disciplinary yeah, action of the TWSLA. We could be sanctioned by TWSLA and lose those games. Okay, that's something we probably need to add to. Yeah. We'll put that in this this policy that we're working on. All right, thank you, Mr. McMack. Uh, item number seven, board attorney contract. Any discussion? I'd like a motion on your new contract. Motion's been made. Do you have a second? A second. Motion's been made and second. Call the roll. Motion made by Mr. Mullen, seconded by Mr. McMackins. To approve the continuation of Mr. Michael R. Jennings, attorney at law, as Cannon County Board of Education counsel in connection with certain identified legal matters and to confirm the agreement, the fee agreement, excuse me, the fee agreement that will be used for this matter. Is that your motion? Sure. Mr. McMackins? Aye. Ms. Duggan? Aye. Mr. Mullins? Aye. Chairman Fan? Aye. Mr. Chairman, four ayes, no nays. All right, item number eight is the director, director's recommendation on teachers eligible, eligible to uh, receive tenure. And that is a notification that that will happen in May. That is correct, Mr. Chairman. May 13th, I will have you a list here in the next couple of weeks that you can look at. And here's what I have, we have determined to do there. To get you more information and that's what you desire. There's no portfolio any longer by law. It's the, and if anybody's listening and wants to look at the policy, it is policy number 5.117 of the Cannon County Board of Education. So to get eligibility, to get you information, some of this information is confidential. So here's what I'm, I'm going to do with you. I will give you a thumb drive with the information on it uh, of those individuals that I recommend for tenure. And you'll say when they were all that information across the page in Excel, even when you click on it, you can go to certain documents even within that. So uh, uh, my uh, executive assistant and I are working on that and we'll have that within the next couple of weeks for you. And you'll have that amount of time before the next meeting to, to look at that and look at my recommendations. And no one will be on that list that is not recommended by me and that is by law. So you'll have my recommendation as your employee that we want to, that we need this person for tenure. Mr. Curtis, if questions arise by individual board members on a certain subject, can they contact the board? You, you can contact me you? and I will be glad to get you that information. And if you feel like you need to contact the principal, the answer is yes, you could. But remember you're dealing with confidential information in regarding test scores and that sort of thing. But like I said, only fours and fives will be are recognized in policy by the state. And this is not new policy. This is the state board of education policy too. So this is the, the act of the, the TCA that was passed. Uh, and then you changed it in um, on Valentine's day of 19 and then changed it again in November of 12 to conform to what the Tennessee legislature had done last year. So this is new. But you're looking at my recommendation. Without my recommendation, that person's not up for me. That would be my recommendation. And then they've got to meet, uh, for me to do that recommendation, they've got to meet that eligibility requirement that you see as part of PCA. It's in the first part of 5.117. So the answer is that yes. I'd be glad to contact the principal for you or get with what, whatever you'd like to do. That would be fair. That would be certainly appropriate, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else have any questions? But it's really not even the principal's recommendation, it's mine as the director of schools. But I will certainly go with the principal and the principal and me will have multiple discussions in regard to this. 
Okay, item number nine, review policy 6.100 through 6.319. Uh, Mr. Curtis, you got anything you want to say about those? Or? If you look at those policies, again, policy review, you look at those policies and you, this is what the motion will state that you reviewed those policies. As I said in the workshop, these are probably the most important policies within board policy. And that is this about students. What we do is about kids every day. And about these students, there they are, and these were reviewed last year. You look at you know, you look at that front page of that, every one of them was reviewed in 2020 and, and looked at. And again, state legislature changed some things and had to be reviewed, had to be changed. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I just say that please. Please take this review seriously that it is looked at as you look at those policies online. That's all I have. You say that you have reviewed. All right, we have a motion to take the review. I think they're still discussing <laughs> that. Let me just look. Very good. Okay. How much emotion do you? Motion's been made, the policies have been reviewed. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion's been seconded, Mr. Colorado. Motion made by Mr. Mullen, seconded by Ms. Duggan, that the Cam County Board of Education review Cam County Board of Education policy 6.100 and 6.319 to the student section. Mr. Rick Mackins. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullen. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Chairman, four ayes, no ayes. Item number 10, the board invitation for a presentation at Auburn Town. Any discussion? I'm sorry. Number 10. Does this require a vote? Or no? Not unless you're prepared to go right now. Well, we know we're not prepared to go right now, and we told them that. But I do think we could go. If it's not there to the high school, we could do something when we get answers, like we told them. I think um, knowledge needs to be flowed out. I think they made that really clear that they were lacking on, on general thought and stuff, and I, I can understand that. Um, phone numbers are out there. Uh, communication needs to be open, and I've, I've never turned anyone away or not answered a phone call. Sometimes I can't answer. Right, that's send, my issue. Send, send when they call, send I don't a, have an answer. A text. I, I will get back with you. I don't know of anyone that I haven't got back in touch with. Uh, I'll give you everything that I have, but at this point, we are nowhere near, I don't even think 50% sure of what we can and can't do. I'd say we're even less than that. Uh, but when we know, no. I think we can tell you, but establishing uh, open communication is something we've strived to do the whole time we've been here. And uh, the phone numbers are there. Uh, if you want to hang around or whatever, I can give you mine directly so you can distribute it or whatever. Um, but when we do know, I, I don't have anything against it, but we'll put it, when we've got definite information, we will put this back on the agenda to take a vote on it to see if everybody wants to go, if that's okay with you guys. I don't know when to table it to. So we'll just bring it back up when we know no and see if everybody wants to go. Does that sound like a plan? Is that good with them? Okay. I'm thinking summer, maybe. I hope so. Yeah, I'm hoping too. Uh, I mean, well, obviously, you know, we've got to have the budget passed and know what we have to spend well, to we, do anything. The, the ESSER money and then the, what the legislature does in Tennessee on the BEP, there's still a lot of, I don't know, it, 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 there's no way to uh, effectively present anything at this point. And the BEP uh, hold harmless is going out of committee, so we do know that and going before, but they're still debating about what's actually that's going to look like. So I'll let the board know as soon as I know anything. From Nashville, I will give you that indication. I've got people to tell me as soon as that's passed to let me, we know the, we know the bill number, we know what, we see what's gonna be in it, and I can be definitive on what was passed. But then again, you've got what's passed there in the House, in the, in the House Education Committee, the Senate Education Committee, the uh, and then the uh, once it's signed, then it has to go before the house and the total house and the senate and signed by the governor. So we got a ways to go. 
but I'll let you know as soon as I know. Would you recommend that we table this? Or we I was going to make a motion to table this to the next meeting, and if we still don't have answers, then we can table it to the next one until we get an answer. That way, this doesn't get forgotten, and they don't get forgotten. I don't think we'll have an answer because the commission will even have voted on it by next meeting. I don't think it so. will be no, sent to the commission. We might on have May more the answers on our other. I yeah, that's okay. Exactly okay. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. The only thing I have to say about that, and it's way heavy on my mind since Tuesday night, I feel, and I know I said I would come, but the more I've thought about it since Tuesday night, if this, if it goes the way everybody thinks if we go to three school system, it's not fair to go to one school system. We want to unite the community in this county. We want Cannon. And just my opinion, I believe it needs to be no more simple, whether it be the high school or here receiving. But that's just my part of it. Whether they go wrong, what happen. Maybe uh, do the high school and each school have, if they have questions. I mean, we have questions. to, every, every school should be, I mean, we're not, it's just not one school in this county. Oh, it's even this school right here. You're going to change the name of this school. Yep. So, I mean, that, that's, six, that's six schools, so to say, that you are closing and bringing them all together in three. But that's just something to think about between now and May or June. Um, I just want to get that out. Okay. Can I, can I say just a little? Sure. Uh, Ms. Harris, I hope you convey to them, uh, your, the people around your area, that this, this decision tonight is not a sidestep. It's not something that we're trying to avoid. Make sure they understand that we just don't have the info and information. Right. That'd be a waste of everybody's time. Right. I'm, I'm not from here. I didn't grow up here. So I didn't know a lot about the history of this county, but in the, in the late 50s, early 60s, and very early 60s, this county was at the same crossroads we are today. Well, in, in, the, in the early, late 50s, there was 52 schools in this county. So those people didn't like it either. Because we went to six. So and it took 10 years to do it. So just pass that on that this is something that we're all facing as a county. It's just not what I'm trying to get is not got it just at Auburn Town. Like Derek's like Derek said. Well, <laughs> well it's quarter what night it happens. It can happen down here anyhow. <laughs> all right guys i'll make a motion to table this so we can at least discuss it next month see what information we have if we're ready then we can discuss how to proceed with it if we're not then i guess we can table it again okay. motion's been made and second call the roll motion made by mr fan seconded by mr mullins to table uh the invitation for the free station at auburn town to the may 13 2021 meeting of the Cannon county board of education Mr. McMackins. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Chairman Fenn. Aye. Mr. Chairman, four ayes and no days. Item number 11, Mr. Curtis. That says three minutes. It, it does say three minutes, yes. Uh, uh, good evening to all. Um, not a lot. I did receive uh, today a certificate from the governor of Tennessee and the, the commissioner of education. And I'll be presenting that to the high school. And that was for uh, the pathway certification that we have. Our emergency services course is now the Tennessee pathway. So the governor really appreciates us doing that as well as the commissioner of education. And speaking of the commissioner of education, she will be in Cannon County on Friday, April the 6th. She, uh, 16th, excuse me, I'll get that right. Friday, April the 16th. And that is, you will start at Woodland School uh, at 10.15 that morning, 10.15 to 10.30. You are all invited. Then she will be going to the high school at uh, April the 16th, next Friday. 
and uh, she wants to look at civics and our civics program. We've got several civic governor civics grants. So some of y'all weren't on, the, weren't on the board then, but we got several civics grants last year, and she wants to see what we're doing with those grants. So we're going to Woodland, uh, and they're going to showcase our civics program at Woodland. And then uh, she's going to go into the high school and look at some of the CTE programs at Cannon County High School. Uh, she's heard some very good things about uh, our program at the high school, so uh, she's going to be going and looking and visiting the high school visiting students, and she'll be there till about 12. We'll get Mr. Nick Nichols may have to watch his lunchtime during that time, and then she'll move on to other counties following us. We we're honored that the Tennessee Commissioner of Education, Ms. Penny Schwinn, will be with us on April the 16th. And our pleasure to announce that. And uh, we hope to uh, welcome her in Cannon County fashion. And um, she's gonna thank us for, thank our teachers and students. And meet with students. She likes meeting with students. What time did she say she'd be here again? I'm sorry. Uh, she was gonna be at 10, 10.15 to 10.30 time frame at Woodland, at Woodland. And then at the high school, she'll be there at about 11.30, you're going to leave one about 11.15, 15 minutes travel time, high school, at, uh, to get to the high school. And then she's going to be there from 11.30 to about 12.15. And I have talked with uh, Representative, uh, Representative Clark Boyd's office and Senator Pody's office. They will probably be accompanying her on this visit. You want us in? Absolutely. You are invited. That's why I'm announcing this right now. If you can. If you can. If you can. It would be great for you to be there and meet the commissioner. I know the commissioner personally, and uh, Ms. Ms. Penny, uh, or Dr. Schwinn, is a uh, very personal individual, and she'll be glad to interact with you and uh, let us know. But I thought that was outstanding news, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I know I'm going to live my three minutes as usual, but that's good news for Cannon County. That we're going to be showcased for what we're doing with civics and uh you know my yeah i think they want to y'all move my heart for social studies and for and for civics and i think we need more civics education and uh, the commissioner's i mean she's well aware of my involvement with civics but uh we're, we're very fortunate to have her here and by the way this was postponed she was po we scheduled last year and it was during COVID and she rescheduled and we had another outbreak. So this is three times will be the charm with the commissioner. The two good things and good news. Chairman always likes good news. Well, there you have it. All right. Okay. I am sir. <laughs> ESSER 3.0 is underway, by the way. And I, I told you all that the other night. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on. Everything is being due right now uh, between now and uh, April the 30th, uh, the 23rd, we've got some major things to do. The 30th, we have some major things to do. And then the May, getting the ESSER 3.0 funding. And we'll be bringing that to you to the May meeting. So it looks like the May meeting is going to be a, uh, a longer one. OK. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, uh, Chairman's comments, uh, I will again I again want to thank our staff and our principals for doing everything they're doing. Testing is fixing to start in some places. Some of it is already underway. You guys try to be patient with the students. I hope that they've learned something this year. We'll soon find out. Um, looking forward to seeing some of the results um, to see how our staff did and how they handled this situation. It's been rough on everyone. And I again really appreciate everything everyone's done to try to hold everything together. Mr. Chairman, if I could, about that, testing begins at Cannon Canyon High School on April the 12th. Now, we've had some other testing, ACT testing, and we've had some other testing, but TCAP will, will start the high school April 12th and go through that that week and then uh, and part of the next week. And then uh, on April the 21st, that's a Wednesday, April the 21st, the elementary schools will start and they'll finish up by the 30th. So thank you for bringing that up. And Testing very, very important for us. Yeah. Thanks again to everybody for your hard work. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. I'll motion second. And second. Adjourn. <laughs>